Hello fellow plot questers, today we've got Born a Crime by Trevor Noah, stories from a South African childhood, and this book is a autobiography written by Trevor Noah himself about him growing up in South Africa, post-apartheid South Africa. So let's get straight into my general, you know, summary and review. So first off, summary. The summary is actually kind of hard to do because it's not in chronological order, so there's no real narrative going forward. However, I can just, I'm just gonna talk about a couple things that he mentions within his biography that I really, really enjoyed, and that's stood out to me. So, so this is, in one word, it's a biography of Trevor Noah growing up in post-apartheid South Africa and dealing with that societal things that going on with the government, politics, and the people, and the culture. It's all quite interesting. And one of those showcases of that being interested is when he was an elementary schooler. Now, Trevor Noah, he isn't just your normal black boy. His dad is a white person, and his mother is a black person. So, naturally, he looks a little bit lighter shade of brown. And when he was an elementary schooler, he first realized that he was different from other people. Because in his school, the white people, in his elementary school at least, white people all hang on their own, and the black people were all hung out on their own, and they were all divided into their respective tribes, such as Zulu, Zosa, Swana, etc. Sorry, if I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, I apologize if I didn't, but those are some of the tribes. And he was in a situation where essentially he couldn't fit in with any of the groups. He couldn't play with any of the children, and that was devastating to him. However, then, he realized he could break that barrier. And how he broke that barrier was language. He learned Zulu, Zosa, Swana, and all of the different languages of the African tribes. He learned English so that he could communicate with the white people and all the tribes of the black people and hang out with basically everyone. He was never truly a part of a group, but at the same time, he could play and communicate between all of these groups. He was taught by his mother that there was a larger world out there. He was taught freedom, free thinking, to never be entrapped by the system that the government has set for them, you know, apartheid. And the, go and the, and the system is quite literally disgusting, apartheid. Apartheid is dangerous because literally how the South African government made apartheid is they took notes from every single other case of racial segregation that was going on in every single other country. They combined all of them. And that's apartheid. They got every part of, a, of racial segregation that worked out in different countries and made a version that would be very, very hard to beat. Apartheid worked very well. If basically it separated the people, the black people of South Africa, because they were instructed to not speak each other's language. A Zosa could not speak Zulu or Swana, and likewise. And because of that, the children, as we saw in the kinder, as as we saw in the elementary school, are dividing among themselves and essentially fighting among themselves so they will never unite and fight against the white people, even though the black people largely outnumbered the white population by then. They made sure that white people were regarded as a kind of another class, another being almost. And for colored people, colored people as in people with a mix of races, if their skin was deemed white enough, they could move up classes. Same for white people. If their skin was deemed black enough, you could be sent out of the freaking system of, of high-class society, of white people. In other words, apartheid used individual emotions and individual cultures that already existed against each other for the government's own benefit. In other words, it was very smart, and even after it got pretty much destroyed and was banned after a while, um, a lot of its after effects continued. And to break out of that, his mother. Now, his mother is an amazing woman. She's very independent. She's incredibly smart. She knows a lot of languages. She teaches everything that she knows to the kid. She teaches him to always question the system, always think of his own, never his thoughts be influenced by anyone else. He becomes independent, he becomes playful, and he becomes incredibly smart, just like his mother. 
Okay, that's kind of like the part, uh, a part of the story that I was really interested by. Another part of the story I was very interested by was how he kind of became a crime lord, selling illegally copied music and flipping items. Of course, he wasn't actually a crime lord or a mafia or, or, or a gang or anything like that. He was just, you know, a kid trying to make some money in his early 20s right after high school. At first, his goal was to make enough money to go to college, but then his goals changed. He realized that like, all this was really fun and he slowly started to forget about college. He kind of melds into this rush of flipping items and scamming people and, and stealing stuff and copying stolen mu music off the internet to sell on discs. In other words, he kind of forgot, lost himself in all of that rush and dust of his criminal lifestyle, although as minor as his crime may be. Then he gets arrested by a random car. Um, by the way, he got arrested because he borrowed a car from his step his stepfather, but his stepfather's car wasn't a licensed car because his stepfather was a mechanic and he had just some extra cars kind of lying around. So in other words, he was in big trouble. He was suspected of carjacking. And carjacking in South Africa was a serious crime because usually carjackers killed the people who were actually in the car. So now he was suspected of murder as well. And he manages to get out and he believes that it is all due to his own volition, and all of his knowledge, but it's not. It was his mother who he had tried not to tell, but his mother had, was the one who actually bailed him out. And he learns his lesson from that experience. He realizes that, you know, doing all of this is bad and he kind of moves on with his life. Now, final, the last and the final thing that I want to mention about these like kind of pieced together stories from his childhood. It actually feels more like a collection of short stories rather than a coherent narrative. Um, there is a final chapter, the final short story, where essentially it's about his mother and his stepfather. His stepfather was a horrible man. He had anger issues. And one day he bought a gun and he shot Trevor's mother in the head. Trevor was really, really angry at his stepfather and incredibly worried for his mother and paid everything, tried to get his mother back to life, and somehow she survived. Bullets missing every single major artery and vein. She came out unscathed. Well, not unscathed exactly, but somehow. And at the end of it all, when he was crying at his mother's hospital bed, mom says, hey, you're finally the most attractive one in the family, and they all laugh, and it's such a beautiful scene, and it's really dramatic as well, and I just thought it was really interesting, it was just an interesting story. And I think we can kind of categorize these three short stories into different conflicts. The conflict of character versus society, apartheid between this free-thinking and language skills that Trevor Noah possesses, character versus self, finding the larger world, getting entrapped in this criminal business and kind of not recognizing himself and losing himself in that in the throttle kind of being shaped and molded by his environment and finally the third conflict being character versus character the stepfather versus the main character the, the main character versus the mother because the mother you know sometimes act acted as a disciplinary figure as she should in his childhood and i think that there are three very important lessons here first and foremost Racism can be solved if one of the sides just take the first step, and that Trevor Noah did. He took the first step by learning the language. Second, one's environment is who they are. Um, our dear friend Trevor Noah, he was in this kind of slums area selling these illegal discs and illegal CDs and illegal music, and he became that. He forgot who he wanted to be. He wanted to go to university. He wanted to get an actual job, you know, and, and that really affects him, and we see that. And finally, laugh in the darkest moments of life. Because in a really dark moment where his mother is literally lying in a hospital bed with a hole in her, in her head because a bullet was shot through it, a miracle that she survived, she says, hey, at least you're the most attractive person in the house now. It's quite beautiful. And we see that even in the most serious, saddest situations in life, it is important to keep a smile on her face and a writer's perspective on this. 
I think that it's very interesting that it actually isn't in like the order chronologically because usually biographies are like, okay, he was born in Sussex and he grew up and he had this job when he was 15, he had this job when he was 25 and he kind of goes chronologically. But in this case, it doesn't. And I think there's a lot of meaning to that. Because first of all, I think that puts more of a focus on the messages and lessons rather than the chronological narrative construction. Because if, if it was one long narrative, one large story, we would more of be expecting like one or two main themes or like ideas, right? But in this case, every single story, every single chapter, every single chapter of his life that's kind of mixed up has a different lesson. So it allows us to, rather than focusing on this larger arc, we, we kind of focus on these individual situations and what Trevor kind of learned from them, what, his, what Trevor's mother taught him. And that, I think, really was the author's intention to affect the readers in that way, to learn about the mistakes that he made and the mistakes that we should not make and kind of learn from. And I loved the humor. There's a lot of humor. Trevor Noah is a very famous comedian. And it kind of works very well because a lot of the themes, a lot of the stories that he tells is very heavy. Like the one, uh, like there was one where he had to like jump out of a moving vehicle because the people in that vehicle was about to like harm his mother and himself. And he starts off that chapter with, you know, when uh, main characters in movies uh, jump out of moving vehicles and they kind of roll and they dust themselves off and they're okay. Well, when I look at that, I say, that's bullshit. The, <laughs> getting off, flying off of, moving vehicle hurts a lot more than that and and that's how he starts and that kind of like lessens the blows a little bit you know it it makes it a little more relatable than this alienated feeling of oh my gosh i've never had to jump out of a car before but by kind of bringing in something that's commonly done like watching a main character in a movie freaking tom cruise jump out of a moving vehicle um it kind of creates that connection with the reader and allows us to emphasize a lot more to the situation which i think is absolutely genius and finally, I kind of I love the subtle jabs at racism, which aren't obvious. It it's really amazing. It really kind of acts like a common sense. It's like you know, I don't need to like be representative or be super outright about it because it's common sense. For example, there's a scene where Kid Trevor thinks, yeah, to me, people was just chocolate. Mother was dark chocolate. Father was white chocolate, and I was milk chocolate. And and you know that's. That's not, there's no real difference. We're all chocolate, right? It's just, diff uh, there's no difference. And, and I think that was a really lovely metaphor of just an innocent child kind of just going, yeah, I mean, what's the difference? Like, there is no difference except how we look, which really doesn't matter as much in the end of things. And I really love that. And I really love the scenes where, like, a shared language, how Trevor knows all the languages, and that's how he kind of destroyed racism almost. And I love those subtle jabs. It's so subtle. It's so nicely done. It's so subtle. So it's actually a lot more convincing to us, the audience, the readers. It's so much more nuanced than it actually just going, yeah, racism, ooh, bad, bad. There's also a lovely scene where Trevor's father says, I don't understand people who are racist in South Africa. If you're a white person and you're not living in Europe or America and you come to freaking South Africa, why did you move to South Africa if you don't like black people? And, and you know, that's also a fair point. Like, why would you move to South Africa if you're just gonna be racist? If you're just gonna make a freaking white neighbor and a black neighbor never see black people? Like, do you like the geography? It's freaking hot there, man. And all those things, I think, does really well subtly critiquing racism and being super, super compelling. And I thought that was really, really interesting. So, to conclude my general review, I will give this book a 9.5 out of 10. Very rare considering it's a nonfiction book, but I thought it was just amazing. I really, really appreciate how all these chapters are like different little stories from different parts of his life that's not chronological at all. I love these stories. I did point out three main stories today. I talked about um, Trevor Noah being in elementary school and learning what racism is for the first time. I'm, I talk about um, how he kind of became almost like a crime lord, like selling stuff and like flipping stuff on in, in like the black market. And I also talk about how he, you know, how his mother gets shot in the head by his stepfather and the conflict of that. And I mainly talk about three things. However, obviously there are more stories within Born of Crime, so definitely, definitely check out the book. It is absolutely amazing. If you're an IB student, you probably will have to check out the book anyway. And yeah, it's just amazing. Again, it's easily what the, the rating that I just gave it. And yeah, that's about it.
And like always, your podcaster Aaron the Podcaster. It's absolutely amazing. And I'll keep the last message that Trevor Noah had for us in the book at heart. Laugh in the darkest moments of life. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.